Hey guys, Nadja here. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping to uh, kind of hear what I have to say today. Um, guys, first I want to say welcome to those who are new. Go ahead and like this video. Please subscribe. I'm so happy you stopped and I want to see you again. Also, for those who keep coming back, I just want to say thank you guys for being such loyal. Um, I don't like saying followers, just being loyal believers, believers, okay, that, that fellowship with me, okay? Today, guys, and if you see a little steam, I got my tea here. I am just, I'm really here to share a story, okay, to give you guys a testimony and to educate you at the same time, okay? Let me get a sip of my tea before I get into this one. So first and foremost, I just so happened to go in my closet on yesterday. Not that I don't go in my closet all the time, okay? And I just so happened to see, or it's almost as if the Lord literally dropped the scales from my eyes to not just see it with my eyes, but see it in the spirit, okay? See with my spiritual eyes. Because I've seen this thing in my closet. Every time I go on this part of my closet, I see it. I have seen it. And it's been there since 2015. Okay, that just goes to show this is not nothing new. It's been in my closet. Basically, what I'm talking about is a costume that has been in my closet. Back in 2015, I think it was 2015, um, my mother and I went to the Bahamas for New Year's. Okay. We actually went to, and it's a funny story because we went to the Bahamas for the sake of a business party, someone that she knows very well, you know, very well to do. Uh, he's a billionaire that has a mansion party in the Bahamas every single year. And it was an Eve of Eve party. Okay, so it wasn't on New Year's Eve. It's on the eve of Eve, all right? We didn't pick up on that part of it. We just didn't. And we basically got there on New Year's Eve and had missed the party. And so we were like, we're going to make the best of this. And we had an amazing time. Now, one thing that did happen while we were there, before, you know, leaving, there's a little tent you know how people put tents up um, and they it's like their little store on the inside of the tent um, vendors she had a tent literally across the street from our hotel we go inside thinking we can maybe get some little souvenirs to take back home and I may have told this story before so this is for the new people but we go inside the tent and I see these little dolls okay i'm gonna see if i can find one of these dolls i've never looked for it so i don't know if it is a traditional doll that was made or if this was just something that this lady made okay y'all i am blown away these are the dolls the lady was trying to sell to us these are dolls attached or associated with obey obey is witchcraft it's basically voodoo dolls. And this is what she tried to sell us. It says here the terms Obe and Wanga are African diasporic words that occur in the book of the law. It says also the mantras and spells, the Obe and Wanga, the work of the wand and the work of the sword. These he shall learn and teach. Obe is a folk religion and folk magic found among those of African descent in the West Indies. It's a derived from West African Igbo sources and has a close uh, North American parallel in African-American conjure or hoodoo. Oh my God, y'all. She did say that she made them, but I don't know if it was like a bohemian or a, um, maybe a spiritual practice of making these dolls, religious practice of making these dolls. 
they were very dark in color look almost like little raggedy and dolls okay but it was very dark in color and you know they were cute little dolls and I'm looking at them but not looking at them like oh I want one I'm just looking at them and the lady was like oh you know why don't you buy one of those for your daughter and she said my daughter's name me and my mom looked at each other and we were like how do you know how do you know her name because we literally had just walked in there we had not said anything about my daughter so there was no reason okay and so the lady ends up basically saying oh I heard you guys say her name we were like no we didn't we didn't say her name so we were freaked out we definitely put that doll back because she wanted me to take this accursed item to my house okay because people that practice certain things um, especially okay if there is an intention behind those items they pray for familiar spirits to be attached to them for the sake of whatever okay who knows but the enemy knew the desire to get that accursed item in my house. So I didn't even realize that the entire time, like the enemy was trying to get me attached to something to take back home. Okay. That was the first attempt. I was totally unaware that I fell for the second attempt because it was not under my radar I was not spiritually mature at that time in regards to what may not what may not be the obvious okay which is a lot of things that people do not pay attention to is to determine what is the origin of certain cultural practices right so on New Year's Eve we're on the beach there's fireworks I mean it's an amazing time fireworks all over the beach I mean, literally, like, you could see it over the water, okay? And um, we then go and walk to another area to see, you know, what's going on. And all of a sudden, we end up walking into a group of people with the costumes that we're on, okay? Now, we saw this when we got off the plane. In their airport, they were advertising the Junkanoo Parade. All right, let me take a sip before I get started. So we just thought, you know, oh, that looks fun, right? Didn't have any intentions on necessarily going. We run into these people that are, you know, off to the side somewhere and we were like, oh, they have on costumes. And so the guys are trying to talk to me and my mom. They were like, you guys want to dance with us? And we are like, you want to be in the parade with us? We're like, oh, OK, you know. We think it's just something simple, something small, right? Had no idea what we were signing up for. They give us the costume that you put on. We had the headpiece. And we're like, oh, this is cool. We dance till we get to the edge of a building. And then we get onto the main street. And didn't even realize we were in the middle of the a full-blown parade and there were thousands of people on both sides of the street and we're literally dancing from 12 30 12 30 in the morning till 6 a.m. the parade was all all night we thought we were having the best time of our lives, right? You just think, oh, it's a parade. There's costumes. We're enjoying ourselves. We're just dancing. And people are throwing beads. Right? So this was in 2015, guys. That costume has been in my closet this entire time. And I asked the Lord, I'm like, Lord, I've seen this costume a million times in my closet. Why is it that I am just able to see this with spiritual eyes to say, what is the real background of the Junkanoo? Where did it 
come from? What are the origins of this? And I was like, oh my Lord. Please don't tell me that I have had an accursed item in my house that I did not even realize or recognize after everything that I have taught. Why am I just seeing this, Lord? So I just had to believe that it was for a time such as now that he needed me to see and recognize. Okay? God's timing is perfect. And so I do believe that there is a reason why he's telling me to do this right now. There's a reason. Who knows, there may be a lot of people who may have just experienced the Junkanoo Parade this past New Year's Eve and may have had a certain experience that would have allowed this video to resonate in your spirit to understand why, if you are a believer in Christ, that you need to do as I did and renounce your association with that celebration. So basically what I'm going to do is just, you know, throughout this video, I'm going to be showing you, you know, you may have already seen me putting up pictures of what the John Canoe Parade looks like, the costumes. And I think a lot of us have seen carnival, right? The carnivals that are in Jamaica, that are in the Caribbeans, and the John Canoe Parade is pretty much the same thing. It's it's the same thing. And so I kind of want to just first and foremost, for those of you who are not familiar with what the John Canoe Parade is or Carnival, I am just going to just explain to you what the John Canoe um, represents or what it is. John Canoe is a festival and I'm just reading from my computer. OK, John Canoe is a festival that was originated during the period of African Chattel slavery in British American colonies. It is practiced most notably in Jamaica, the Bahamas and Belize, and historically in North Carolina and Miami, where there are significant settlements of West Indian people during the post emancipation era. In the present day, there are considerable variations in performance and spelling, but there are the shared elements of masquerade drumming, dance, and parading. In many, in many territories, Junkanoo is observed around the week of Christmas. These Christmas time cultural parades are predominantly showcased in Jamaica, the Bahamas. It was, I'm sorry, in Jamaica, period. The In the Bahamas, it was initially called Junkanoo and is said to date back to the 1700s where it is celebrated year round. In Belize, where the music is also mainstream, competition results are hotly contested. Now, when we get to the origins, it says its origin is assumed to have begun in the Bahamas, but it claimed by several other islands in the English-speaking Caribbean. However, evidence shows that Junkanoo's origins point strongly to Jamaica and was lately spread throughout the Caribbean as early as the 18th century. The festival may have originated several centuries ago when enslaved Africans or their descendants on the plantations in Jamaica celebrated holidays granted around Christmas time. This was done with dance, music, drumming and costumes. The costumes and drumming used in celebration in Jamaica show strong similarities to West African mask dances. Okay. Now, for those of you who do not know, those masked dances are in association with certain African cultural spirituality, okay? And it is a form of worship. There is several conversations or things that I saw when I was doing my research where they tried to say it was not at all connected to any form of um, spirituality or religion that it was just secular festivals. However, a lot of um, the history of it has also been lost, as they said. These are people that did research on it, okay? Now it says the annual um, Yam, I'm sorry, the annual New Yam Festival of the MMO Secret Society of the Igbo people, okay? 
Now, this is what it said. A contra Let me reread what I just said before that. A contribution to the origins of this Jamaican tradition could be found in three groups of West African festival traditions. These are the three groups. The annual New Yam Festival of the MMO Secret Society of the Igbo Peoples. Second, the, um, I don't even know how to pronounce this, the Igungun Masquerades of the Yoruba people and the Homowo Yam Festival of the Ga people. Just to give a little bit of background about the New Yam Festival, okay? This is basically saying that the ritual kicks off officially after the king emerges from the inner chamber of his palace clad in an all-white attire and joined his chief, who are all dressed in white attire. The king leads a procession with the chiefs amidst drumming and dancing from the palace to the village square. Now, we do know that African spirituality and African, you know, their, their lifestyle of spirituality, they believe in hundreds of different gods, okay? Unless they're Christian. The, the Igbo people, the Yoruba people believe in multiple gods, okay? And so majority of all of their um, spiritual celebrations are like this, with masks, dancing, drumming, and it is to uh, conjure up the spirit or the gods that they serve, all right? And so it says here, the procession takes about 90 minutes to arrive, the village square and a lengthy prayer is said for the well-being of all children and the land, both home and abroad. The procession returns to the palace for a pounded yam eating ceremony. The festival is an age old tradition and a way of thanking God for taking care of the people. But we know that um, this particular uh, festival is, is not thanking the God that we serve as Christians, Jesus Christ. Okay. So, and I'm reading this just so that, to give you some context so you know that it is a spiritual thing. They're dancing, they're honoring their ceremonies, um, is a form of worship. That celebration is a form of worship uh, for the ancestors as well, in reference to the Junkanoo, okay? And here is more information that I found about the Igbo's new yam festival that confirms my suspicion. The Igbo's of southern, I'm sorry, southeastern Nigeria celebrate the new yam festival known as, I'm not even going to try to pronounce any of these, but it's, it's every August. This festival marks the end of the rainy season and the harvest of the yam, a staple crop. For the Igbo people, yams are more than just a source of food. They are a sacred symbol of life, longevity, and prosperity. That's big time idolatry, okay? The new yam festival is a time to give thanks for a successful harvest and to honor the gods. As I said before, these spirituality practices, they worship multiple gods. And it is not the god of the Bible, but it is the God of this world. So I'm not going to go through all of the different festivals because I want to keep this association with the Junkanoo. But I did do some research um, specifically on Junkanoo to see if there was any ties to any of these other spiritual practices. And if I can, I'm going to put this up on the screen so that you guys can see what I'm reading. OK, this was an actual website. And yes, it's an article and it's it's labeled surviving secularism, secularization, masking the spirit in the Junkanoo. And Junkanoo actually came or started from a man by the name of John Canoe. All right. Now, it states here. The hypothesis of a religious origin of Junkanoo was bound to arise. Both masking and dance were pervaded by spiritual meanings across West Africa. For the European bifurcation, 
of public life into separate secular and religious domains did not exist. Pointing out the similarities between Jamaican Junkanoo and African masked dances, Orlando Patterson proposed that the origins of the Jamaican tradition could be found in three clusters of West African festival traditions. Okay, and it's going to name basically what I just mentioned. The Yam Festival of the uh, Secret Society of the Igbo people, the Igungun Masquerades of the Yoruba, and the Humawa Yam Festival of the Ga people. All three of these are filled with spiritual purpose and closely tied to rites uh, venerating ancestors. Okay, all three of these are filled with spiritual purpose and closely tied to rites um, venerating ancestors. Okay, following Patterson's lead, a number of other scholars working on Jamaican Junkanoo, including uh, Sylvia, Sylvia Winter, Sheila Barnett, and Cheryl Ryman, have similarly argued that its origins lie in West African harvest festivals or other religious rites. While pointing to a variety of possible sources, these authors have tended to privilege the Yoruba uh, Igungan festival and or the massed dances of the Poro societies spread across a large part of the region from which the enslaved were drawn. Okay, a Sterling Stuckey also notes very suggestive similarities with Yoruba um, Igangan observances and concludes that such parallels clearly indicate that this North American version of Junkanoo represented an African derived religious expression of reverence for ancestors. They constitute, at least in part, attempts to recover deeper meanings that have presumably been lost or only vaguely retained among present day Junkanoo practitioners. Okay, so that is to basically tell you that in their research, it is very, very closely related to the other festivals that are very heavily involved in some form of spirituality, okay? And reverence of their ancestors, all right? On this next page, it says, in popular writings on Junkanoo produced for both local and tourist consumption, generalized invocations of spirit and spirituality are common, often in conjunction with references to the African past, the ancestral experience of slavery, and the deep and infiable, ineffable, sense of shared identity many bohemians feel when participating in the festival in one such publication junkanoo is described as a motivation to become one with the inner spirit and a spirit touching experience junkanoo is tightly plated into the bohemian psyche According to another such publication, yet seldom do we dwell on its roots that have been within us since we first became aware of ourselves. When Bohemians do take the time to listen to the stories of the elders, continues this author, author we are born back through the years to understand the drum that beats always within us. The drum that is the spirit of our ancestors. Voices call out to us across the century. Such statements suggest a tendency in the Bahamas when expressing the symbolic association of, of Junkanoo to conflate a re, uh, rationalized national identity with vague notions of a surviving African spirituality. In the words of one anthropological observer, Junkanoo allows the Bohemian people to gather pride and strength from their heritage and their spiritual roots in Africa. So again, my reasoning for doing this video is 
I know that whenever the Lord brings certain things to my attention, how he has done me for the past four years, it is for the sake of teaching. It is for the sake of e sake of educating. Okay. A lot of us as Christians and believers, um, we don't truly understand how to recognize what is of God and what isn't. And so I'm grateful that the Lord allows certain uh, situations like this to take place so that I can be used as, you know, um, an, as an example to help other fellow believers to understand how to properly recognize through, you know, a discernment that if anything is a spiritual practice, okay, and it is not tied to Jesus, it is idolatry and the following or worshiping of false gods. Where we go wrong is that we think that because we do it ignorantly, that it has no effect on us. But that is how the enemy tricks you and fools you. Because you believe, okay, that just because you did it during a time that you had no idea what you were doing, that you're covered and protected. And, and let me say this, that doesn't mean that you're not necessarily covered, especially if you are a person who is always seeking the guidance of the Lord with the desire to live in obedience to him, then he will bring this knowledge to you. Okay. If you have a heart to serve the Lord and you don't ever want to be in wrong standing with him, he's going to bring it to you. If you're watching this video, this might be your answer. Okay. And if you've been to the John Canoe Parade or you've been to any other festival in Jamaica, in Belize, in North Carolina that was festival related like this, okay? These are the roots. The roots are African, okay? The roots are coming from African spirituality. And so if you have partaken in any of these festivals and you are a believer in Christ and you actually care about the open doors that you may have because of it, immediately you should repent. Immediately you should renounce. And if you have a costume like I, you know, will show you that I still had in my house, it needs to go immediately. Our desire to please our father should be so strong that it don't matter what we have that we deem to be a souvenir or have memories attached to it. If it is offensive to the God we serve, it needs to go immediately. And there should not be any second questioning or doubting whether or not you should do it. If you are second questioning and you are doubting because it's something that your family has, you know, celebrated since you were a child or you might even be in the Bahamas. But if you are a Christian and you just didn't know, but the Lord is bringing it to your attention, it is time for you now to go before the father in repentance and renounce and get rid of anything that's in association with it. If not, then you are willingly telling the Lord, I value and idolize this over you. That's what you're saying. Okay. So I am praying that whoever is watching this, that you're able to see, recognize and understand that this is not something that as believers in Christ, that we should partake in anything that is a, and I say this all the time, culture does not mean kingdom. Just because it is a cultural practice that you may have grown up in, that your family came from, if you are a Christian, culture does not come before the kingdom of God. Okay, your culture does not come before the commandments that God has called for us to live by. You, you're going to have to pick a side. You're going to pick the culture, which can, you know, keep you attached to the enemy. Okay. And cause you to break the commandments of God. Or you can choose the Lord Jesus Christ and choose kingdom. Because 
down. I mean, he's a jealous guy. He will not share his throne with anybody. So you can't have one foot on one side and one foot on the other. That is the true definition of a lukewarm Christian. That is the true definition of a double minded person. So I am humbly coming before you praying that if you have any association with any of these things that you now are able to see with spiritual eyes. Okay. So that if there's anything that you practice, that you read, that you watch, that you listen to, that is associated with a certain culture, you always want to do your research to see if it is a spiritual cultural association or practice. If it is, that's how you know you should not have it in your house. You should not be wearing it. If it's something printed on your clothing, you should not um, be singing it. You should not. I mean, you should have no association with anything that's cultural that is associated with a spiritual practice that is not attached to Jesus Christ. OK. You must test everything. You must research everything. You must go before God and get his um, approval on anything and he will reveal it to you. So I would advise that anyone from this point, it may be something that you just don't even remember that you have in your house, that you say a prayer to the Lord, please reveal to me, Abba, is there anything that is in my house that I am unaware of that I may know it's there, but may not know it's, it's dangerous to be in my home. You may not know that you have an accursed item in your home because if it's in an association with a um, worship or honoring or reverencing ancestors, it is an accursed item. So you go before God and asking him to reveal to you if there is anything in your home and he will reveal it to you. You will just have a thought that just pops in your head that reminds you, oh my God, I did this. Or, oh my goodness, I have, you know, a, a mask in my house that's hanging on my wall that I got from one of these festivals or that I specifically purchased, maybe even from Africa, that you don't even realize may have been a, um, a mask that was used in some form of ritual celebration. And if you have that in your house, it is an accursed item. So it is time, guys, to pay attention to what's in your home. What could be bringing unnecessary warfare to you and your family? What could be blocking certain blessings from coming to you because you unknowingly have an accursed item that goes against God in your home? So I pray that this this message has brought some attention to maybe something that you may need to pay attention to and to get rid of. And I thank the Lord for using me and allowing me to recognize that I have had this in my home and I have been um, truly living for the Lord since the end of 2019. So. For me to just recognize that this was there, it was for a time such as now, okay? So I thank you guys for watching this. If you know someone else who has any attachment or association with these things, please share it with them, okay? Share it with them and say, hey, I thought I think you might need to, to know this. And by all means, do your own research. I will provide the website that I um, receive this information from in the description box. But a lot of people ask me certain things of whether or not this is demonic, whether or not that is demonic. Is this okay? Is that okay? I literally just do a quick search to find out what the origins are of anything. Okay. And that's how I know. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.